Hello and welcome. Ken here. I'd like to talk for just a minute here about this uh, fantastic free software uh, Blender. Now you can get Blender free from Blender.org. If you just go to Blender.org you'll see here's the download button right here. Um, and this is what we're going to use to hopefully make some pretty cool projects here in the future. Um, let me just show you few things that Blender is capable of here. Uh, photorealistic rendering, these are all pictures that are 3D objects that have been rendered out in Blender. Um, you can make 3D models. Um, here's a little bit about the compositing system. You can make uh, characters and pose them and animate them. Uh, there is a uh, sculpting feature in Blender that allows you to get really incredible fantastic detail into your models like this right here. Uh, UV unwrapping we'll talk about in a project maybe. Um, this is a great render which I believe is from Andrew Price from BlenderGuru.com which is a great website. I suggest that you check that one out if you're interested in Blender or uh, 3D uh, 3D art in general. It's a, a great place to check out. Um, there's uh, you can do fluid simulations. Uh, you can create games. Yes, in Blender, um, you can add 3D objects into live footage. Fantastic. Um, it's a really great program. It's actually uh, kind of a suite of programs, and it's um, it's free, free to use. Um, Let's see. Oh, I wanted to um, let's see under under the cycles link here. There are some incredible renders that have been done inside Blender. Now keep in mind that these are all 3D objects that have been rendered inside uh, Blender. Um, here's a scene, very complicated scene it looks like, uh, <laughs> made in Blender. Um, fantastic. Uh, this is from Cosmos Laundromat, which is um, a movie that they're working on at the Blender Institute, I believe. But this is a, a shot from the movie. Um, buildings, city scene, cartoon. Um, here is a photorealistic rendering of some jewelry, it looks like. So if you're into jewelry design, you know, maybe this is something that would be good for you. This is a fantastic render here of um, a nature scene. Um, here's kind of a fun cartoony looking thing and a photorealistic shot here. It's it's really incredible the type of stuff that you can do with um, Blender, our architectural scenes. And keep in mind it is free. You can download it from the website and really the only limit I guess is your imagination. Um, fantastic. Okay, anyway. Um, I was thinking uh, here is Blender after you download it and run it. You know, this is what you'll be looking at. The current version that I'm using right now is 2.78, and this is what you'll be looking at, or something very similar to it, uh, when you download it and run it. Let's just take a look real quick. We'll click off of the splash screen here to make that go away. And here's the default scene in Blender. Now, to uh, move around, in the 3D view, if you have a three button mouse, if you hold down the middle mouse wheel and then drag your mouse, you can rotate around the 3D view uh, and look at your objects from from any angle. If you hold down the shift key and the middle mouse wheel, uh, you can pan around without rotating. Uh, scrolling the wheel, of course, zooms in and out. I think you can also Let's see, hold the control, no, alt, uh, let's see, there we go. Um, if you hold control, middle mouse wheel, you can move the mouse to, to scroll in and it's a little smoother than, than just rotating the wheel. If you rotate the mouse wheel, it kind of jumps in and out, but if you hold control, middle mouse wheel, and move the mouse, it's nice and smooth so, so you can zoom in and out. Now, if you don't have a three-button mouse, under the file menu up here, go down to um, User Preferences, and that will open up this window. And under Input, the Input tab, make sure that you have Emulate Three-Button Mouse checked here, and then just hit Save User Settings. And what that'll do 
is that allows you to use just your keyboard um, like for instance if you're on a laptop laptop you can use your keyboard and touchpad uh, to navigate around the 3d scene um, if you press control alt left click you can zoom in and out well, like so if you press shift alt left click you can pan back and forth and up and down um, alt left click allows you to rotate around the scene so if you don't have a three button mouse you can still navigate the 3d scene uh, with just you know in my case on my laptop here with my uh, with my touchpad and just the keyboard okay uh, I'm a firm believer in learning by doing so instead of explaining what each one of these little buttons and controls does um, in this introductory to blender video I think we'll just go ahead and make um, a simple object and that way you can get introduced to how to navigate uh, the 3d viewport add objects and, and actually create something uh, to start this is how the 3d scene starts um, by default it will, you'll have a cube right here in the middle this is the camera and this is kind of a default lamp that blender puts in uh, we don't care about the lamp and the camera for right now so let's go ahead and we'll delete the default cube um, if you press X on your keyboard and then just confirm that you want to delete the cube, uh, the cube will go away. I thought for a good starting project, just something to kind of get our feet wet, we would uh, make a chess pawn, something fairly simple. Um, and what I'm going to do is, uh, you'll notice that, that Blender has a couple of different panes open here. We got one down here, we got the 3D view here in the middle, um, and then we have uh, these two over here. Now, now this one is controlled, well, all, they're all controlled by a little button here which allows you to change the, the function of each individual pane. Um, we can make this one a 3D view as well and rotate around it the same way you would rotate out here. But in this case I want to change that from the 3D view to um, a UV slash image editor. Uh, this one right here. Um, we'll grab these handles here and make it just a little bit bigger. Now I have already downloaded a picture of a pawn and I'm just going to open that right now and you can zoom in and out with the with the mouse wheel and this is what we're going to try to attempt to create here. Anyway I thought this would be uh, we'll just leave that up there for reference as we're modeling. Okay in the 3D scene you'll, you'll notice this little thing right here in the center. Now that if you left click that, that will move to wherever you click and that is actually the point in the scene where new objects are going to appear when you add them so if you've clicked anywhere and, and that that little 3d cursor has moved uh, we want to put it back in the center just so we can kind of say stay centered here so hit shift s and we want to hit uh, cursor to center now that'll put it right back in the center of our grid there all right now on this piece there's probably a hundred different ways that we could start to model it but I'm gonna start with a, uh, a sphere up here at the top so you can add a, a, a new object we are in object mode here so everything we add is going to be a new object so if we hit shift a it brings up the add menu um, you can also get to it uh, here on the side um, I have a lot of tabs here, you probably won't have this many, but if you click on the Create tab, let me scroll that down just a little bit, yeah, if you click on the Create tab, you can also add objects here, um, a UV sphere is what we're going to do, but we'll do it this way, Shift A, Mesh, UV sphere, and there we go, we have a UV sphere in our image, uh, in our scene now, <coughs> excuse me, um, there's a couple options down here that you can play with, you can, um, turn the segments down and make it less detailed. You can turn them way up and make it a lot more detailed. We're going to leave it um, at the default though. So let's let's say that back. Uh, UV sphere, that's fine. It, it doesn't matter for, for what we're doing. Okay, so what we want to do is to look at this object directly from the front. So if you press num, uh, 1 on the numpad, it'll bring you into front perspective view. Um, now if you don't have a number pad I think yeah you can um, under the view 
menu here, you can hit um, uh, front and it'll bring you into the same front perspective view. Now, perspective is fine and everything looks great, but when we're when we're trying to model, I find it's helpful sometimes if you hit five on the numpad or I think under view um, uh, yeah you can change it here uh, numpad five uh, from perspective to orthographic so I'm gonna press five on the numpad and go into orthographic view and what that does is it removes the perspective distortion uh, shift middle mouse wheel move your mouse to to move your object uh, to pan your object around so I'm gonna move that kinda up towards the top like the picture here and I find that um, with perspective mode on it's a little more difficult to model because you're you have to deal with that perspective distortion so so we'll, we'll model in uh, orthographic view okay anyway enough said um, in object mode um, we can move our object around we can um, oh, but by grabbing the handle here, you can move it uh, constrained to whatever axis uh, the handle is on. The blue one is Z, it will only go up and down. The red one is in the X axis, will only go back and forth. And if we turn there, we can see the Y axis will only move in the Y axis. Um, or you can press G. G. Um, I always thought it stood for grab, but when, when you move the mouse um, around now, you can move the object anywhere freely in the scene. Okay, right click to cancel the transformation. Um, but we can't, uh, we can't really change the, the shape of our object here in object mode. We can only move the object around. Um, we can press S to scale the object bigger or smaller. Um, right click to cancel. Um, but to actually change the shape of the object, we need to go into edit mode. So if you click here, we'll switch from object mode to edit mode, or you could press the tab key. The tab key, I think by default, goes between object and edit mode. Okay, when you go into edit mode, everything is orange here, and it's that means everything is selected. So if you hit G to grab, it's gonna move the whole thing. But notice this time, when we move in the edit mode, it doesn't move this little dot here. The dot is the center of your object. So if, if we're in the edit mode, we move the object out here, whoops, grab, move out here, left click to confirm, and now we rotate the object. Uh, we go back in the object mode, sorry, and we rotate the object, you'll notice that it's it's rotating around that orange dot. That's because the the center of our object is still where that dot is. So, control Z to undo that. Um, when you're in object mode and you move the object, it moves the, the center or the origin of, of the object with the object. When you're in edit mode and you move everything, it does not move the origin of the object. Just something to keep in mind for later on. Anyway, <laughs> I think I tend to ramble sometimes. Um, everything is selected now, so if you hit A, that will unselect everything. If you hit A again, it selects everything again. So, we're going to unselect everything. Now you'll notice all these little black dots on our object. Let me zoom into it a little bit here. <coughs> if you right click on any one of these dots, you'll notice it turns orange and then that, that dot is selected. Now that dot is a vertex. That is one of the control points for our, our 3D mesh here. And if we press G to grab, we can move it and it changes the shape of our object. Now that's great. Right click to cancel. Um, but what is that going to do for us? Well, well, let's talk about the different um, the different uh, selection modes. Um, right now we're in vertex select, but if we hit this one here, we'll go into edge select. Now instead of selecting one point, if we click on on our model here, we're going to select one edge which is a line running between two vertices. And if we hit G to grab that, you'll see it moves that whole edge, uh, which is the same as selecting two vertices. And if we click here, this is face select mode, and you'll notice that if we select any point on our object now, that we're selecting 
an entire face, which is four vertices or four sides, and we had G, it moves moves the whole thing around just, just like you would expect. So those are the different ways to select uh, points on your object. Um, now you can press, instead of having to click down here and select vertex, edge, or face mode, you can hit control tab and that brings up the mesh select mode and you can select whichever mode is appropriate. Um, you'll find that in Blender shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts come in very handy so it's it's worthwhile to, to learn what they all are. There's lots of them but you'll, you'll eventually learn the ones that you use most of the time. Okay, anyway, now that we've talked about how to select uh, the mesh in different ways. Let's go ahead and try to model our chess piece here. Um, it looks like the top here is basically a sphere, except the bottom, it looks like the rest of the piece kind of extrudes out the bottom. So we're going to do the same thing with our piece here. Let's move it back up to the top. Uh, hit A to deselect everything. Now if you hit B, it brings up um, box select, and you can click and drag across any part of the model and it will select everything within the box. Now we want to uh, delete the bottom part of our sphere here and then extrude the rest of the chest piece out from that. But you'll notice there's an issue here. If you rotate around you'll notice that we've only selected the front half of the part that we selected. One to go back in the front view. And that's because our mesh is being displayed as a solid piece now, so you cannot select anything on the back side of the mesh. Well, we don't want that in our particular situation right now, so let's hit A to deselect everything, Z to put the mesh in a transparent mode, and then I'm going to box select again this bottom part of the mesh. And now if you look at the bottom, you'll notice that we've selected everything. Alright, great. Press 1 to go back in the front view. I'm going to hit X to delete, and if we delete vertices, we're going to delete this row of vertices, and the hole is actually going to start at this line up here. So I don't want to delete that row of vertices, but I want to delete everything, uh, all the faces past that. So I'm going to hit X, delete faces. Then that row of vertices stays, but all the faces down past that that were selected get deleted. All right. So Z to go back in the solid mode so we can see what we're doing a little bit. Now we have a sphere with a hole in the bottom. And what we want to do is select that whole bottom ring, and then we're going to extrude the chest piece out from that. Now, from what we know about selecting, we can select the vertex, and then if we hold shift, we can select the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and so on and so forth, and we can go around the whole circle like that and select the whole circle. But there's an easier way. We can go to Edge Select and then we can shift select around there to, no, nope, that doesn't seem so easy and we selected something wrong, okay. So, go back to vertex. The easy way to select um, an entire loop of, uh, an entire edge loop or an entire loop of vertices or edges is to hit alt and right click on the edge. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, right click on the one of the edges of the loop that you want to select, like so, and it selects the whole the whole um, edge loop. All right, let's go back into front view. Go up just a little bit and zoom out. Now, to extrude, to pull the rest of the chest piece out, we're going to hit E on the keyboard. And if we move the mouse, we we, ne we now are extruding out from that uh, from the sphere. But you'll notice that wherever we move the mouse, it kind of you know, we could move it down here and kind of try to get it as straight as we can and left click to lock it in place. Or, um, while we're still in the transform mode here, we can hit Z, which will lock it to the Z axis up and down. And if we move left and right, you'll notice that it doesn't move. So we want to bring it down, I don't know, how tall do we want it? About, about that tall. Hit left click and that'll lock it in place. And that looks, I don't know, that looks pretty good for our chess piece, I guess. Um, <clears throat> now the bottom is a lot wider than what we have here, right? So what we want to do um, is to scale the bottom up. So, so this bottom loop here is about the, the size of, of this, you know, about the same proportion as this chess piece over here. So if we hit S 
to scale, we can drag our mouse out and it scales out the bottom and I think, I don't know, about about there is right. Left click to lock that in place. Okay. Not too bad. We're getting there. We got some work to do, but <clears throat> we're getting close. Um, press 1 to go back in the front view. Okay. So we have our bottom established and it looks like at the bottom here it kind of angles out a little bit and then back in. So how are we going to do that? Okay, if we press uh, Control R, you notice it puts this purple line on the mesh up here. Or when you cross over one of the lines, it puts a purple line. Now, if we cross over one of the lines down here, you notice that the line goes vertically now, where uh, and it seems to be jumping around wherever you move the the mouse. Well, we want to create a new edge going this way on this part of the mesh. So we'll put the mouse here, left click, that cuts uh, a new line through the mesh, uh, and it's in transform mode so it can move up and down. Let's see, we want to move it down to, I don't know, about here, do you think? Okay, great. Now instead of scaling this out to make it flare out, because I think the bottom is big enough already, what I'm going to do is uh, hit A to deselect everything, Alt right click to select that bottom loop again one to go into front view and I'm going to scale it in just a little bit so S and drag the mouse toward our piece okay like so then I'm going to grab that whole ring and move it up just a little bit that looks about right it doesn't have to be exactly like this piece just so we get the idea okay so now we've got this angle now going out so now we need another one going in so we're going to try to make this ring going right here. So let's cut another line. Control R, left click, drag it down to about here. Looks good. And then I'm going to press S to scale, and we're going to bring that in a little bit. Maybe I'll bring that down just a little. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now this might be a little tricky because this is not a you know this down here was kind of a sharp angle this is a curve so what are we going to do here well let's um, create uh, another cut and if we scroll up on our mouse wheel we can make multiple cuts let's, let's do I don't know three yeah three sounds good we'll left click to lock it in place now we can move them up and down, but they won't get closer together, which doesn't seem to work, but that's fine. I'll show you how to move them after we lock them in place. So, left click to lock in place. Um, I'm going to Alt, right click, to select just this one. Um, you can either hit Control E and go to Edge Slide. Uh, I know it's in here somewhere. There it is, edge slide. And that will allow you now to move that uh, edge up and down. So we want to move that, I don't know, about there. We'll press scale, bring it out just a little bit. And then we want to alt, right click this one. And instead of control E, you can hit G twice, G, G. Um, slide that one down to about there, right? Um, S to scale out a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to right, uh, alt right click this one, GG, slide it down here, and we're going to start that curve uh, coming back in probably about here, I don't know, scale, bring it down just a little bit. Okay, not too bad so far. Okay. In the interest of time, let's forget about this little detail right here. We're just going to make this smooth curve up to this part that kind of is like a collar at the top. <clears throat> so let's do um, Control R. We'll make another loop there. Bring it down uh, about the middle somewhere. Scale it in. Then we're going to make another cut. Control R up here. Bring it to about there. Scale it up about like so. Uh, let's zoom into that part so we can work a little more closely. Now if you press the period on your numpad 
it will zoom right to that selection. So let's press uh, Control R. We'll make a loop there. And this one we want to flare out because we're, we're going to try to make this flare way out right here. So we're going to put that down pretty close. Scale. Bring it up like so. Uh, GG. Slide it a little bit like that. I think I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, that that that's that's close enough. You you, you get the idea. Okay, so this is what we have so far. If we tab back in the object mode, this is our pawn that we've made so far. Not exactly like the picture, but you can get the idea. It's reminiscent of a chess pawn. Um, I'm not happy with this right here. We need to fix that a little bit. So let's tab back into edit mode. Um, I'm going to... Okay, we've got that selected. I'm going to shift, alt, right click this, select that whole thing. GG. Nope, that doesn't work. Um, uh, grab, select Z to constrain to the Z axis and pull that up. Uh, Alt, right click just this one. Scale down a little bit. No, I think scale up a little bit. Um, Alt, right click this one. Scale up. I'm going to put another loop here. Oops, right about there. Scale up slightly, just to kind of round it off a little bit. <clears throat> okay, tab back into edit mode, and here's what we have. Now, our whole piece looks a little faceted here, so what we can do is up under the uh, Tools tab, um, we can click Smooth Shading, and that'll smooth it out a little bit still looks a little rough. So what we can do, go back to front view, and now I'm going to hit 5 to go back into perspective view, just so we can get a little view of what it looks like in the real world. But if we go here, in this panel, under our modifiers uh, tab here, we're going to add a modifier and add a subdivision surface modifier and we'll put the views up to two. And you see how that kind of smooths our piece right out there? Let's go back in the front view, but we're in perspective now, remember. So th this is what we have now for our chess piece. Not too bad. Um, if we want to make these angles a little sharper here at the bottom, let's tab back in the edit mode. We'll go up to, to right there. Uh, this is the, you can see the original mesh that we created here. Um, this is still the original mesh. All that is still still there. But what the modifier does is that creates a, a mesh um, kind of beneath the one that you created using an algorithm that kind of smooths everything out. Um, comes in very handy. It looks very nice. But it does kind of tend to get rid of your sharp lines. If we turn off, if we t hit this little eye icon here, it turns off the modifier. And I think I want a little sharper line right there. So there's a couple things we can do. Um, well, here, let's see. If we press the N key, that opens up this, pa uh, this pane on the side here. <coughs> if we Alt, right click, we can still select that under there. You'll see, um, oh, where is it? Uh, here it is, mean crease, is it the mean crease, I think, yeah, we can turn the mean crease up and that will sharpen up that line. So now if we go back into object mode, you'll see that that line looks a little bit sharper down there. Now let's go back into edit mode. We will turn our mean crease back down to zero and I'll show you hit period on the numpad to zoom back in there. And a different way to do it, and I think gives a little bit more control, is to do control R. We'll put another loop cut right there and just slide it down pretty close to the other one. And then we'll put do control R, put a loop cut down here, and slide it up pretty close to that one. 
So now back in object mode, I think that looks a little bit nicer. <clears throat> so there is um, our simple chess piece. It doesn't look exactly like our, our reference, but y you get the idea. It's, it's reminiscent of a chess piece. Okay, um, I hope that you saw how easy it is to create at least something simple that looks pretty good in Blender in just a little short time, and it's, it's actually pretty easy. And um, the software is free, so I encourage you to go out and get it and give it a try and stop back and we'll do some, some fun projects and hopefully make some cool stuff. Alrighty.